Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe, and most of you I'm assuming are using Windows right now, or if you're on a mobile phone, you use it at home. So we're gonna be talking about a major new Windows update that we've known about for a while. It's coming closer, so we've got a lot more updates on changes that this Fall Creators update is going to have, and that's what I'm gonna talk about. Some of the biggest, most significant changes that we know about so far that you might see in the next version of Windows, and it's expected to come out around October. So there's actually a lot of interesting stuff that they're implementing, and let's just talk about it. And here's a fun fact you might not have realized. The version numbers for the Windows releases, the big updates, actually represent the year and month they were released, about. So the first two numbers of the year, the second two numbers are the month. So the next one is gonna be 1709, even though it's gonna be October 1709. It's about the same time anyway. And that works for the previous ones as well. So that's kind of neat. Anyway, here's the first feature that you guys might find interesting, that Windows is gonna be able to throttle programs that are inactive at the moment. So if you're not using it, it might throttle down the resources that you, it's using. And you can see this from the test build, the screenshot in the task manager, it has background moderated. So it'll tell you whether, I don't know if that means it's currently being throttled or just if it's set it to be allowed to be throttled. But still, it's a pretty interesting idea that if something's not really running in the background, it's taking up a lot of resources, it might use less now. Next up, here's something that is actually pretty major, and that is Windows is teaming up with Qualcomm to release a version of Windows that will run on ARM architecture chips. And if you don't know what that means, let me explain. So there's a bunch of different types of chips. There's like AMD 64, i386. Your computer does not use ARM 64 architecture. That's mostly for like mobile phones, like the Snapdragon processors and like the Raspberry Pi. Those use a different architecture that's mostly oriented towards very small portable devices. Anyway, Microsoft is making it so Windows 10 will be able to run on these mobile architecture processors. So for example, the next Snapdragon 835 and later chips will also be able to run like regular Windows programs. It says it's gonna emulate x86 regular programs, but I'm not really sure if that means it's gonna emulate the entire operating system. It kind of looked like that from screenshots, but if you're emula emulating the entire operating system, does that even matter? I don't know. But the idea is that now, maybe even on future phones, you'll be able to run emulated versions of Windows programs, which is really weird. This might only work on certain types of applications, and obviously they're partnering with Qualcomm here, so they might only unlock the feature on specific devices. I don't know how much they're gonna open this up, but not even necessarily phones, but tablets, anything else that uses this ARM64 architecture might be able to run native Windows programs where before it would have not been able to run them at all. I don't know how big of an effect this is gonna have, but I personally think it's a big deal that you're basically allowing a whole section of devices to be able to use Windows programs now. And they even said like heavy hitter programs like Adobe Photoshop, those are not resource limited. Those are big time programs. And even that is gonna be able to run emulated on a ARM chip, which is usually unheard of. So I think this is pretty exciting. I think it's gonna open up a lot of new use cases for these mobile processors, maybe make mobile PCs a lot more common because it would allow both the mobility and the functionality. So we'll have to see. There's a lot you can talk about with this feature, but let's move on and keep talking about Windows. All right, the next change is pretty sad. Uh, we're, I, I don't know how we're gonna get through this, but Microsoft is killing off MS Paint. Oh, you guys know and love Microsoft Paint. It was the best editor, right? Well, not really. Anyway, they're calling it a depreciated feature, so they're not gonna develop it anymore, even though I'm did they even develop on it before? Did they even add features in the past 10 years? I don't know. But so they're not gonna be adding any new features, but I think they're gonna keep it in and then remove it in a later version. So it'll still be in it during this update, but 
it won't be anything new and they're going to be moving towards probably replacing it and then taking it out all together. Now the next feature is with the Photos app, that's what you open up regular photos with. It's going to be getting that story remix feature that they talked about. You probably heard about that. That's nothing new. It allows you to edit uh, videos and add effects and pictures and stuff like that and that will be added in as part of the Photos app. So that's gonna be in the next creators update. Some of the effects they showed were actually pretty neat. So we'll have to see how that turns out. The next major addition, again, is nothing new. They talked about this before, but the My People Hub. So the idea with this is there's gonna be a little area where it will show all your contacts across several different platforms. So not just your Microsoft account friends, but also like Xbox, Skype, that sort of thing. So you'll be able to have all your contacts in one place. You can message them across platform, send them emails or whatever. And this way you don't have to go into each individual program like, oh, I want to call someone on Skype. You don't have to go into that necessarily. It's all right there. I don't really use that many other platforms for Microsoft, but it's good for a lot of people, I think. And remember, this was actually supposed to be in the previous update in the spring, but I guess it wasn't finished yet, but finally they'll be adding it in this one, hopefully. I don't think they'll take it out again. Moving on, we have a small little update, and that's with power throttling for the whole computer, for like battery. So there's gonna be a new slider that you can use from the taskbar, you click on the battery, and it'll allow you to change the power setting in your computer, whether it's in power saver mode or high performance or whatever, you can now slide between them, which is kind of neat. So if you're gonna play a video game and you want the max performance, you can put on high performance then and turn it back later really easily. So I think this is a really neat feature, especially if they let you switch between custom profiles. We'll have to see about that. All right, now the next feature they're adding is really interesting. I did not see this one coming at all, and you guys probably didn't either, but they're adding a new feature called True Play for games that before they were gonna call it Game Monitor, but now it's called True Play, and it's basically an anti-cheat software in built into the operating system, which is really unheard of. I, I don't think we've ever heard of this being proposed ever before, but here they're adding it as a feature. So the idea is that this True Play feature is gonna be a setting in Windows, and you can enable it or disable it, but some games could presumably require that you have this True Play enabled so that it won't allow you to cheat. Because sometimes, obviously, we know that cheating programs for video games, they kind of bypass the game's ability to see that it's cheating. But obviously, if it's the operating system itself taking a look at if you're cheating, that's gonna be able to detect cheats a lot better. I think cheaters are gonna have, are not gonna be happy about this, and I really hope that they implement this into a lot of games. It might not be implemented into too many at first because obviously it'll only work for Windows users, but hey, now that the feature is there, if it turns out that it works amazing, I think this will be pretty neat to see. Here's another feature that's kind of cool. Windows 10 is gonna support eye tracking. What? So, all right, so it's gonna be an accessibility feature, I'm assuming. So it's gonna allow certain devices, I think one is called like the Toby, where it sits in front of you and actually looks at your eyes to see what you're looking at. And I guess people who are disabled, they don't have full use of their arms, can actually use this to navigate in Windows. And maybe not even just for that, but if you're playing a video game, it might support that for looking around. I know there were games in the past, like uh, flight simulators, that kind of allowed this type of head tracking and eye tracking, but this is something that is baked into the operating system now. Pretty interesting to see if not just accessibility programs start using this, but also like mainstream programs as a cool secondary feature, especially in games. I think that would be pretty awesome actually. Now this next change, I didn't really understand what it meant, but the change log says this. It says you can now let Windows automatically process video to enhance it. Now that's very vague. I don't know how it does that, whether it's only in like the Windows movie viewer app or if it's for all video players but apparently Windows is gonna be able to enhance videos that you're watching. And just off the top of my head, a couple ways it might do this is upscaling, like super sampling, or having to do with HDR, like artificially processing it to HDR, that sort of thing. 
but obviously I don't think it'll make a huge difference. Most of these enhancement processes don't really do that big of a deal. It's like when uh, a 4K TV or DVD player says upscales 1080p video to 4K, it's like, yeah, well, you're still working from 1080p. You're not adding any more information, but it, I don't know, maybe it'll make it look better if it can sharpen it. But I don't know exactly what it means because they didn't explain any of it. We'll have to see. Now, the last change I thought was worth mentioning, kind of, is that Windows 10 is gonna be adding new emojis. I guess it's not really a surprise. This seems like the big deal these days, but it's gonna support emoji 5.0, so a new set of emojis, and it's gonna be integrated into, I guess, the keyboard, so it's a lot more accessible to add emojis wherever you're typing. Might be neat for you guys that like to use emojis all the time. Now it'll be even easier. So that set of changes is actually pretty good in my opinion. There's still a few things that we never really got, which was like the music maker they talked about like last year. I guess they never really released that or finished it or whatever. I'd love to see that, like it's GarageBand for Mac, then Windows would have its own thing. I think that would be amazing for people who are into music, but maybe don't want to shell out money for a, what is it, a DAW, DAW, digital audio workspace, whatever it is. They're expensive, they're not cheap. So if you can have one built right into the uh, operating system, that would be pretty awesome. And remember, we're still a couple months out, so they expect it'll be in, out in October, but the version number might suggest September, maybe towards the end of that, somewhere in that range. The point is there's gonna be a lot more development between then and now, so we could start to see some uh, big features that they add that we've never even heard about, I'm, I'm pretty excited based on what we've already seen. You get a bunch of new features. I'm not really complaining. So I think that's it. You guys can let me know what you think. If there's any features that you would love to see that I didn't talk about, or maybe some suggestions for Windows. I don't think they're gonna read this, but we can still talk about it. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos a few times a week. And be sure to enable notifications, otherwise YouTube literally won't show you the videos at all. Also, if you wanna follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I post on there as well. Both handles are just at TheoJoe, and I try to post neat stuff. You might wanna check it out. Anyway, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.